If you're anything like me, the first time you opened up a node modules folder, you were probably amazed at how many libraries were inside of that single folder. But that's not even a small percentage of the number of libraries that are available on NPM for you to install. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the six by far most useful NPM libraries in my opinion. And these aren't going to be libraries like React or Angular or Vue or Express that are more framework based. I'm going to talk about small libraries that take up a specific use case that'll be useful in any project that you create. So let's get started now. The first library I want to talk about is DateFNS, also known as Date Functions. And this is essentially a library that contains a collection of hundreds of different functions that make doing anything from adding days to dates, to subtracting dates, comparing dates, formatting dates, locales for dates, literally anything you would ever want to do with dates, it makes it incredibly easy. Because by default, JavaScript dates are really not that easy to work with. They don't really have that much functionality built into them. So date functions is a library that adds all of that functionality that you need into it. And you may be hearing of something called moment.js. That's another date library that's out there. But in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of other people, date functions is just a better version of moment.js because it allows you to import only the parts of it that you need. As you can see here, they're importing only four functions from date functions. So it allows your bundle size to be incredibly small. And it also allows you to use native JavaScript dates. Moment requires you to wrap your date in a moment object, but with date FNS, you can just use the normal JavaScript date object and do all of your operations on it that way. Date FNS is also entirely functional programming, so it's really easy to get started with because all the functions are pure, there's no classes to worry about. It's just really straightforward, helpful functions that'll be useful in any scenario. Also, as I've mentioned, it has internationalization, which makes working with different locales incredibly easy on the front end. If we actually go over and look at the documentation for this, you can see over here that there are absolutely an incredible amount of different functions that you can use on your dates, and they're all so incredibly useful because like I said, JavaScript really doesn't have that many good date functions built into the standard library. The next library I want to talk about is .env, and I use this in almost every single node project that I create. What it lets you do is it lets you create a local file called .env, and you can store all of your environment variables in here, for example, your database information, and then you can pull that into your application by just calling require.env.config, and it'll load all your environment variables into the process.env variable in Node.js. This is incredibly useful for when you're developing things locally and you want to be able to use environment variables without having to manually set these environment variables every single time you run Node. Just having that file and being able to easily change things in that file and share that file with other people makes this library incredibly useful. Also, as you can see up here, it has zero dependencies, which means this library is going to be incredibly small. And since you're only going to be using it in development, that's really nice because you don't have to download a bunch of different node modules just to work with your application. Next, moving on to a slightly larger library, I want to talk about Socket.io, which makes doing WebSocket real-time communication between your server and all of the different clients absolutely a breeze. I have an entire two-part series on creating a chat application using this library, so if you're interested in figuring out more in-depth about this library, make sure to check that out linked in the cards and the description below. But essentially what this library does, if we go to the documentation here, you can see that all we need to do is set up a very basic server, and then inside of that server, what we can do is we can actually send information down. If we scroll down a little ways here, we can just use our IO to create functions essentially that we can call from our client on our server, and then that server can send information down to the client by essentially calling functions on our client. This allows us to make really easy real-time communication from our client up to our server and then back from our server to all of our different clients. It's absolutely amazing how easy it is and you definitely have to check this library out. Next, moving on to another really straightforward library, we have UUID, which as you can see, gets 16 million downloads a week, so it is incredibly popular. And essentially what this library lets you do is it allows you to create unique identifiers, UUIDs, in your application with just single lines of codes. And it has all the different versions of UUID that you could ever want to use. For example, version 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, it doesn't matter. You can include whichever version works for your application. This is incredibly useful when you're working with any form of client-side application or even a server-side application where you need to create unique identifiers because you can use this in both Node as well as front-end JavaScript. And let me tell you, I use this all the time in my applications because all the time you need to create unique identifiers, especially when working with React. Up next, we have everybody's favorite fetch replacement, Axios. Essentially what Axios lets you do is to create web requests very similarly to how fetch works, but it's so much easier to use and gets around a lot of the gotchas that you have to deal with when you're doing JavaScript and JSON related fetch requests. 
It just does all of that backend information for you behind the scenes so you don't have to worry about it. Also, Axios is incredibly small when you bundle it into your application, so it really doesn't add much bulk for you. And most importantly, is it actually goes back very far for support. As you can see, IE 10, for example, or IE 8.1, Chrome 7, Edge 10, it just has massive support, which Fetch doesn't even come close to doing. So if you want to support older browsers, Axios is a great way to do that. And if we scroll down a little ways, you can see just how easy the application is. Just axios.git and you pass it a URL, and there you go, you've already done a Git request, and that's way easier than doing it with Fetch. And it's all promise-based, so you can use async await if you want, which is incredibly useful with this library. There are many other libraries out there that do similar things to Axios, but they may not be promise-based, or they may be larger, or not support as many features as Axios. Axios has a great balance of being incredibly easy to use, incredibly great on the client side, incredibly great on the server side, and just all around amazing for creating things that Fetch makes difficult. And finally, onto our very final library. This one is incredibly small and simple. It's called class names. And what class names does is it allows you to really easily combine different class names together, conditionally or whatnot, to make one single class name for your different HTML elements. It's really useful in libraries such as React, Vue, Angular, any library that has a lot of front end manipulation, but you most often see this in React. And essentially, as you can see over here, you just call class names, it's just a single function, and you pass it in an array essentially of your class name. So for example, we have a class name here, foo and bar on this first example, and it gives you the string foo bar for your class names. Also here, we can see that you can pass objects as well. And if you have true as the option, then it's going to return that class name. And down here, as you can see, we have false for duck, so duck does not show up in the list down here. That is really what's super powerful about this class names function is you can really easily create list of class names based on different options and parameters, true, false, that you're going to have inside of your application because otherwise you have to do a bunch of nested ternaries which makes it really difficult to create these class names. But this function right here, single function, super small, takes care of all that for you and it's just so great to work with. Short, sweet, and to the point. Those are my six favorite NPM libraries. And if you want to see more videos from me, make sure to check out over here and also subscribe to the channel for more videos of me simplifying the web for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.